I heard joke once. Man goes to doctor, says he's depressed. Life seems harsh and cruel. Says he feels all alone in threatening world. Doctor says treatment is simple. The great clown Pagliacci is in town. Go see him. That should pick you up. Man bursts into tears. But doctor, he says, I am Pagliacci. Good joke. Everybody laugh. Roll on snare drum. Curtains. Everybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. No power in the verse can stop me. What's going on guys? My name is Elden. Oh fuck's sake. I, I <laughs> Oh, I think you nailed it. Yeah, okay. Alright, let's do it. What's going on, guys? My name is Elden Arrow, and welcome to episode 20 of the Midnight Hour. Yes! He did it! That, <laughs> that was, was the best one you've ever done! You fucking... Oh, <laughs> not Sounded bad. nothing like me, but I loved it anyway. <laughs> oh, when the time came, you nailed fucking it. nailed it. <laughs> right, so this is episode 20, which means that we're legally almost allowed to drink in America. Which is... Yeah, the most done. Isn't it really interesting that you can, like, own a car? You can get a tattoo, you can get married, you can have kids. You can you get can, fucked uh, by several men on camera before you can have a drink in America. Yeah. And well, also, yeah, right, you, you can oh, buy a video game that puts a gun in your hand and sends you off to fight the Viet Cong or whatever, and then you can actually go and get a gun in your hand and go off to Iraq <laughs> you and can, In some states, you can get fucked when you're 14, but you can't have a drink. Yeah. So, so you can fucked. get fucked, but Cheers you for that can't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. You've just ask R. Kelly about that. Ooh. <laughs> R. Kelly didn't Ooh. fuck her, he just pissed on her a little bit. Is no, that that's not true. R. Kelly was married to Aaliyah when she was 14. Fucking hell. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and the only reason that he got away with so much um, statutory rape is because... Do you know what? I am not talking about this on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I could get in serious <laughs> trouble here. It's statutory rape, not a, like, a serious subject. Yeah, but he the only reason he got away with it was because um, the people who got the warrant that showed the substantiated evidence of him actually doing it, they got the warrant um, unjustly. Yeah. yeah, so it didn't count. It's like, yeah, we know you've done these things, but that warrant, that's not that's not fair. So. Yeah. The, Justice the, system wins you've, again. Yeah, you've been really done over here. That's not fair on you. This so, is, I, so. There is no way to transition from this into what we were... Um, <laughs> you didn't even introduce us. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm joined by three guests today, which means that this is the first ever show with four people, which means that this is going to be a fucking nightmare to edit. <laughs> so my first guest is Jack Bran. 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 Right, from last week. And the second guest is Aaron Loosemore from last week. Hello. And that's how he sounds. And the third guest is not a guest. He's the co-host. He's the guy who is like the founder of the show, finally returning after several days of yearning. Oh, I don't it's know been where this is going. it's been weeks since I've last been on this podcast. It's been weeks since I've actually had time to do anything. To be but honest, how long has it been since your last confession? Since my last <laughs> confession, uh, that would have to be twenty-one years and however many days past my birthday it's been. <laughs> so, um, where have you been? Where have I been? Um, I went from being at uni and being on my summer break from uni, so doing nothing, to having a full-time job at doing shift like with shift work meaning I've been working things like 4pm to midnight uh, 5am to 3pm uh, ridiculous fucking shifts that mean I have no time nor energy to do you work do as a pimp? <laughs> Pimping ain't easy good question Jack and someone's got to do it you know it's a thug life someone's got to do it yeah yeah I didn't choose a thug life um, it chose you it chose you my mum chose it for me actually <laughs> 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 You went to see career counselling, and that's what they suggest. <laughs> yeah, you need to live the thug life. <laughs> you'd, you'd be su- you'd be surprised what job centre suggests for you. Um, You're a big lad. You've got a beard. 
<laughs> you look like you can swing a samurai sword. We've got the perfect yeah. job. You for look you. good in purple. <laughs> <laughs> purple is not in the ginger boy's colours, Will. Trust me. I don't oh, know. You would know, as it? I would know. There's two ginger as jacks on the show. Yeah. I can't. How we can't differentiate the jacks, and it's really difficult. Like, because they're both, they both meet the exact same descriptive criteria. <laughs> like, if I were to describe either of you to like one of those policemen who does sketches of people, they would just they'd sketch the same picture up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Six foot two, six foot three, ginger hair, a few freckles, speaks mm. a bit like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could we not refer to you as one of you as young Jack? Whichever one is the youngest. No, because the young one, the the young Jack is actually way more intelligent and mature <laughs> than the old Jack. Yeah, Jack. So, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. No, I am. <laughs> how old, is Jack? How old are you? I'm 21. No, oh, you son of a bitch. Why? Oh, no, how, yeah. why? How, how old are you? I'm 23. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that was an old. Oh. You actually, that age. <laughs> That, that's how you so like. That's how you cram a sentence like "your life is over" into one syllable. Oh, oh, no. oh! Maybe here's a guy that's going. Maybe he should life. be more mature. Oh. Hmm. Anyway, we lost uh, one of the greatest entertainers in the world this week, and uh, I think we should do some kind of tribute to him somehow. I don't really know how. Let's just talk about Robin Williams and how yeah. fucking shocking it was to find out that he died. Um. He's. I. I thought. It, well, I thought it was fairly common knowledge that he's been struggling with depression for the last forty odd years. Um, and it while is, it, uh, it uh, suicide kind of in this degree, especially for people like us, you know, that are just fans and not uh, family or friends, is always quite surprising. Uh, but you know, it's not completely out of the blue. In terms of him going from outright happiness to. Suicide. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was shocked in a way, like, oh my god, he's actually gone. Mm. But not sh- when I heard it happen, I was like, that was probably inevitability. Yeah. Because of his how much he suffered for years. Yeah. I don't know. I always thought of him as kind of like the uh, the sad clown sort of thing because you always see him in pictures like as the, the jovial sort of um, Joker, and then other times you'd see him really serious, and it always kind of threw me that the, the guy could be so funny yet so. A clown can make you know. people laugh, but who can make a clown laugh? That's the thing. That's an analogy people use. Yeah, yeah it does. It probably. does seem that a lot of the greatest comedic minds have often had uh, depression of sorts. Anyway. Yeah, John Belushi is yeah. probably the most recent example. Of that. There, yeah, there is like there is a pattern with comedians, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, the, David Wong actually wrote an article on Cracked about it. Um, the the night that it was um announced, the night that the news broke, and he made like. A load of, like David Wong is a really analytical guy who really gets into people's heads and knows the motivations behind why people do things. But he's also a comedy writer, so he he obviously understands. But Cracked is a humor website. Like they're all mm. comedians in some form, and David Wong listed like seven articles I think just off the top of his head that have been on that website written by comedians about things like depression and drug abuse. Yeah, Rob, and, Rob Delaney. Uh, Rob Delaney as well. Yeah. He wrote one about depression. Or he suffers from depression. Yeah. yeah. I've read his book, and it's very like he gives a really detailed account of his alcoholism and his mm. struggles and stuff. And it is, it's, but that I know, like you guys were saying that it it wasn't so much of a surprise because you were aware of what he suffered from. Yeah. And I don't really think I'm surprised. I think I'm just really, really saddened. Like it's really yeah, yeah, definitely. extra tragic. It's, it's like I'm, I'm never affected by like celebrities dying. It just doesn't bother no. me. No, but yeah. this is basically someone you grew up with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it really is. You know, I mean I mean I think uh for especially for our generation, Mrs. Doubtfire especially was a staple of childhood film. Yeah, it you know, was. Um and one of my mates actually tweeted uh, one of the lines from the film, if anyone remembers it, is that um she says, uh, oh you know, he loved the drink. It was actually the drink that killed him. And she said, Oh god, was he an alcoholic? And she went, No, he got hit by a truck a, a Guinness truck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and my mate tweeted that, and I I kind of felt bad for retweeting it, but I think that if anybody could appreciate humour in the light of someone their own death, it would be a comedian, especially yeah, of Robin Williams caliber. Well, he's the greatest, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, it's up there with like them sort of times, like Toy Story, with the same sort of time. Mm. Like it's just one of them films that you just you associate with your childhood and growing up. 
Yeah, there's a lot yeah, like Hook. Manchi and Hook. Yeah, Hook was probably yeah. mine. I watched that movie countless times. Yeah. I used to have it on VHS, and like I'd come home from school and watch it. Like I knew it word for word, line by line, off by heart, pretty much, because I watched it so often. Like I loved all the pirates and the, you know, you know, pretty much the entire story about Peter Pan. I've never liked it in any other form. Only ever the Robin Williams one. Like mm. I've never been interested in the story at all, but. Robin Williams as Peter Pan is pretty much the perfect sort of uh, thing, I think, for me. I don't know. I mean, I, I, great movie. I just don't know anyone who can like, transition from being the funniest person on the planet to being the most, one of the best serious actors of all time as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can't name a comedian who, who does the same. I mean, you, you think about, like, he won an Oscar for a serious role, you know. How many comedians do that? But I suppose you could, yeah. I suppose you look at, I suppose Jim Carrey in some films. Yeah. Yeah, but he's always... Like as as much as I love Jim Carrey and Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of more of a goofball, like if you know what mm. I mean. Like, yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it without sounding disrespectful to him because he is without a doubt one of the greats as well. He suffers from depression as well, doesn't he? Probably. Like, yeah. it, there's a very good chance that anyone you know who is funny is more likely to be hit by depression than, it, like, you know, a, mm. an average person. I think. Well, I think he recently. Like, I know he was sober for so many years. Um, Robin Williams yeah. and then he recently in the last year or so uh, started drinking again so yeah the thing I don't like is that people have, like it was on the news yesterday saying saying oh he's about to go bankrupt I was like that has nothing to do with anything Yeah. he he did not kill himself because he was bankrupt we did not just be known that he was bankrupt like or going bankrupt or whatever it was well I don't see why they had to run with it for, as the first story yeah. Like, yeah but like the story there is that one of the most beloved comedian and actors of all time has died just run with that. Don't run with the fact that he was Yeah, bankrupt. people want to read about his life. People want to read about his films and his family and that. Don't want to read about his money situation. Yeah. I've, it's you know, not as if like someone in his position wouldn't have been given a gateway into a way yeah, of that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Robin Williams isn't going to be the kind of person like... I mean, he could e- easily have done, you know, be like a, you know, like a Bill Murray. He could easily yeah. be that lovable face in, you know, every other film. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that Bill Murray's overrated or anything but he you know you see him cropping up in a lot of films he's never short of cash flow and I'm sure Robin Williams would have been offered plenty of chances and he would do a quick guest appearance guest appearance you know um, I'm sure that if he had wanted to and if that had been part of what he was wanting to do uh, you know he could have done you know a stand up tour if he'd really wanted to I mean I doubt it's I doubt it's true anyway I doubt it's true anyway Yeah, it's probably um, the media trying to distract from. I mean, his films, that. his films grossed like three over three billion dollars. Mm. I mean, he hasn't done a really recognisable movie in a while. I don't think. Like, I haven't seen a Robin Williams in the last, I don't know, five years maybe. But yeah, mm. I mean, he's still. Think about how many. You know. Think about how many royalties he must still get. Yeah. Insomnia probably be the most recent sort of big movie he was attached to would it be is that 2002 3 is that how old that is is it I'm probably completely wrong actually that's 10 years old no yeah it would be because it was after um, yeah 2002 or sorry it was before pretty much every other Nolan movie so yeah that's crazy I still haven't even watched that film I went to watch it last night but I share my Netflix account with like half of my friends family and uh, (laughs) there were too many people watching it when I went on so I couldn't watch it but (laughs) I've been dying to watch it for a long time, and I was like, I might as well watch it now, seeing as, you know, like, Robin Williams has sort of mm. been brought to my attention again, and I feel like I should have, like, I've se- like I've seen pretty much all of his main movies, but I haven't seen them recently enough to really appreciate them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it all sounds very cliche to watch something just because he's died, or did yeah. take just because someone's died. I did watch but Good Will Hunting last night, actually. I was meaning to, but I didn't in the end, but I am going to. I think is his... Oh, he's so amazing that movie. I think that's him like that is that guy he is mm. that guy probably just thought, yeah he just I think he enjoyed making people happy yeah mm. like he he's the good guy but I think he's just a very quiet sort of unassuming man I mm. think maybe I think like I've just been thinking you know we've been talking about how a lot of comedians are depressed and I think to be a comedian you've got to take a very objective view on life and while that would expose you to a lot of the funny instances that you see in day-to-day life or that you see in, you know, your life in general, being an objective person will also expose you expose to the... You to a lot of awful yeah, shit. Yeah, a lot of awful shit, a lot of harsher things. I suppose that'll take a toll on you after a while, no matter how much comedy you find in life. Yeah, that is true. There's sort of a community on Twitter that I follow a lot of people from, and I know that Moore, you do as well. 
Yeah, I do. And they all tweet like the funniest jokes I've ever seen. Like, if anyone is is if anyone is curious, look at my favorites on Twitter, the tweets that I've favorited, and you will find some of the funniest jokes. But if you look at those people and you follow them regularly, you'll see that they're prone to a lot of very depressive types of tweets and a lot of dark stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite clearly a, a thing that's just a symptom of being a. It's it's not so much a symptom of being a funny person. I think being a funny person is a symptom of having dark thoughts and stuff because it's a shield more than anything else. Like. Well, I think being a comedian, first and foremost, you you want validation from people, don't you? Yeah, and that absolutely. Must co- take its toll on people, you know. Yeah, that's true. You essentially too. want validation from strangers, so you know. Yeah, but, maybe he grew up or was trying to get. He was trying to be validated so much that I don't know. Imagine wanting to get validation from strangers. So, anyways, oh, guys, if you like what you're listening, <laughs> yeah, to, please like press it. the subscribe button. <laughs> And uh, please yeah. like this video and please leave a comment and also tell me how good I look today. Please follow me on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I never said this in the last episode, but the links to all of the people in this call right now, all of their links will be in the description and please, you guys should go follow them. Please, please don't follow me. I'm not very interested. <laughs> I'm not very interesting. Um, I follow, follow Loose more. That's, that's yeah, I, yeah. tweeted, I tweeted once in five days. Yeah, the two jacks you guys have really like you guys are really slacking on your Twitter game and I'm Yeah, I'm I'm currently making it my mission to make my tweets as mundane as possible. <laughs> I, so far recently I've tweeted about buying a blender and getting the train home from work. <laughs> it's it's going really well. It's that fuck life you were talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I I've my tweets like some people just really like them and I get loads of replies that are like oh, I love that you just don't give a fuck and then I get so many tweets at me that are just like the fuck are you talking about why are you so weird on Twitter and stuff like that and I, I just I don't know like people it's the same with the intros to this show people are always like why is this so fucking creepy and then the other half are like I love these intros they're great and I'm just like I don't know I like like polarizing and that's the internet basically that sums up the whole internet yeah, the, thing is, yeah. the thing with Twitter is like you can be justified with how good at Twitter you are with how many people like retweet your stuff and favourite it and stuff like that I think that's a good indication of how good you are at Twitter I don't because people retweet the most ba- like my most retweeted tweet is the most formulaic and basic tweet I've ever made but for some reason everybody loved it but then I make an amazing tweet about tigers and nobody <sighs> cares and it's just not fair it's like the it's just bullshit, you know. A disturbing amount of people favorited, favorite, favorited, whatever, <laughs> uh, whatever. I give up with that whole sentence. I believe it's your game. <laughs> <laughs> favorited it. Yeah, they sh- they they did things to uh, the the star the star shaped button on on Twitter when me and El yeah. just decided to talk like fourteen year old girls on Tumblr. Oh right. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you remember that. That was like three four days ago. Dude, I have a very... I used <laughs> to be the most, like... I'd have the greatest memory in the world, and now I'm just nothing. I'm a shadow of my former shadow. I don't, like, I just... I failed as a human. <sighs> I think, like, I was... I was. It sounds, like, really pretentious, but I think if I had a lot of followers, I'd get a lot of retweets. Yeah, I, but, I think your tweets are pretty good, because you don't really tweet unless you have something good to say. Nah. Which, but uh, that should be the way it should be. It's usually, about, it's usually about Katy Perry or... Like, if you tweet about, oh, I've had a shit day... And then that's all you tweet. Nobody then cares. Nobody cares. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would never fucking tweet that. Yeah. I tweet, You've I never tweet, had a shit I've day, tweeted though, that like... several times in the past few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a well, lot of but shit But you days. must have had a really shit day to tweet that. To be fair, I don't need that shit of a day to just go, nah, it's been a shit day. Yeah, neither do I. One I, person just... can piss me off at some point during the day and it just ruins everything from then on. I can just have a normal day and then just vaguely recall the existence of some song that I hate and then it's a shit day. You know? it's, usually, it's usually right and then I get home about six and Elle calls me on the diet. <laughs> oh god, it's, it's just, a shit day now. It's, it's just now. downhill from there, yeah. That is true. He That's drives me true. to Domino's. So right now is your worst part of the day. Because, yeah. <laughs> oh god, yeah. I was loving work earlier. <laughs> what, what did you guys think of the feedback that you got on last week's episode? I came across better than I thought I would <laughs> than, yeah, exactly. than, than you thought I would I had to edit it pretty hard <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I say like three lines didn't I? yeah I think so yeah <laughs> I cut out everything that you said except for the part when you said hello and then the part when you said bye good, so yeah. it was oh, I did enjoy the fact that the Russell Crowe facts changed people's lives oh man so yeah they were those good were, those were so good should we uh, take a question from Ask FM which yeah. is also in the description if anyone wants to ask I'd 
We did, like, episode 10 that we did was a Q&A, and people were like, you should do this every 10 episodes, and this one, we have literally got nothing in mind when we started pressing record, so... I we mean, just... we had to start with Robin Williams, but... Yeah, you, yeah, but that's... I mean, this that... is a milestone episode, it's just the 20th, so, you know, we should have mm. really had something better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hope Man. that would be... We haven't even yeah. decided what questions we're going to answer. There's one yeah. here that I like, because it's a hypothetical scenario, right? You are a psychiatrist, and your patient has just confided in you that he intends to kill a woman. You're inclined to dismiss the threat as idle, which I don't know why, because you're a psychiatrist, but you aren't sure. Should you report the threat to the police and the woman, or should you remain silent because of the principle of confidentiality? And I just realised, I don't think the principle of confidentiality is a real thing. I don't think that they're under any obligation. They're, then they're not doctors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, so they're they're doctors, so they are doctors, but in the loosest possible sense. They would have taken the Hippocratic Oath of uh, uh, patient-doctor confidentiality. Absolutely not. I think even if they did, that kind of should be thrown out the window in that kind of situation. I'm pretty yeah. sure there's, you know, there is a clause or something saying that, like, you know, um, like when they say you 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 can you're safe to tell me anything, there's an asterisk there, unless you you you're planning to murder someone. Oh, I mean, it's with it's with things like doctors and stuff. They they're supposed to keep like patient sort of thing yeah. confidential, but they say like if there's anything to do with child abuse or anything like that. Then you have to tell people. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's going to be certain situations where you have to tell someone something. It's yeah. The same with priests in movies when bad guys go to priests and they're like, "Oh, I killed seventeen men." Like hashtag in, bants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in real life, the priest would just go to the police and be like, "This Has guy is was mental. a murderer in my confession mm. booth." <laughs> yeah. I'll tell him we'll be right back. Cause you just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitting in there now. Can you just put these handcuffs on as part of your penance, please? <laughs> but what if a woman is dead? <laughs> <laughs> this is another reference from last week this is so inside I, I shouldn't have said it it yeah. made sense though yeah <laughs> but yeah that kind of thing just throw any kind of confidentiality out the window no yeah right. I'm, I'm pretty someone. sure your moral obligation overrides the any oath of I'd rather be a human being than a I think it depends on whether that guy has been seeing that therapist or whatever for, for an amount of time if he's just gone into that for the first time ever and gone I'm going to kill a woman then you go well right I'm gonna but if he's been he's, you know if he's gone to the therapist over weeks or months or years and this is the first time he's brought up the fact that he's gonna murder someone I think I'd go as, maybe I'd go as far know. as say the psychiatrist is a fucking shit if he's been going for months or years and he still wants to kill someone if, yeah. if, uh, change, if, if change I'm a psychiatrist. psychiatrist and like my first client comes in and says I'm going to kill kill a woman, my first response is I'm not a woman. Just so thank God I'm not a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting away. With I think this. the I think the important thing is that he intends to kill. He's telling you that he intends to kill a woman because if he just goes, I've been thinking about killing people a lot recently. Then <laughs> you can kind of just go, though. well, try not to think about that. Really, um, sh- probably mm. shouldn't think about that. If he goes, do you want a biscuit? <laughs> yeah. you, just, you just do want it all good last, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, cuppa? No, uh, uh, yeah. Cuppa, knife, wait, no, shit. Um, no, no, yeah, not knife. Because <laughs> people offer people knives regularly. Well, you know, he might need to butter <laughs> his toast. Only the good therapists offer you a knife. Who, mi- <laughs> who, mixes, their, who mixes their tea with a knife? Hey, man, when you it run doesn't... out of spoons... You gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. yeah. Life hack, if you run out of spoons, <laughs> you can use a knife to stir your tea. I've... Mm. <laughs> yep, the straw yeah. would also work. Any kind yeah. of cylindrical or uh, object that you know, a pen, a pen would work. It doesn't even anything, have to be anything with some kind of larger area, which could actually push something around. You can use a blue whale to stir your tea. You don't. You don't even enough. need something in the cup. You could just swill it in circles. Yeah, just, yeah. just put your finger the into the boiling water yeah. and just like mix it about a bit. Yeah, yeah. you could use a, a TV remote. Like, yeah, TV remote. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're actually talk- we're actually talking about tea. Like, can can we seriously just not talk about tea? You know, we're, we're not all, we're not all English men. You know, oh. where drink- are you from again? I, d- I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever mentioned it before. No. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? You fucking. I love this question. <laughs> it's, this uh, is like you'd... my favorite question. I've had it several times. It's not that hard. How old would you be if if you didn't know how old you were? I'd be you'd be, you'd you'd still be, had, like, your be memory wiped now. or something. You'd still be the same age. Well done, you bunch of pragmatic, pedantic wankers. What did you the expect nice... from us? Like... <laughs> I don't know. There's, oh, there's, yeah, I don't be, think there's I'd anything. Twelve and a half years old. There you go. No, you'd be fourteen. Answer. I've done the math. You'd be fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Go. That was like, right. yeah. I don't get why you think that's so, like, insightful. 
Because you, Jack Brown, Jack Bran, Jack Bran, like you're the same age as me, right? Now, realistically, neither of us deserves to be this age because neither of us are adult enough. But I'm definitely more adult than you are. Speak for yourself. I am speaking for myself. <laughs> Do you say you're more adult than I am? Yeah. So is your face. Oh, I'm not having this. I, I, I definitely am. Like, so, like, I would say you're probably about fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> My habits suggest not, but. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, let's yeah, move away from this. We've discussed this before about the legality of whatever else. So, so you can be any age and do things there. Does any? We're all logged into this. Ask FM. Yeah. Does anyone else see a question that? Can I? Can I raise a point? Has something happened to Pete Doherty recently? <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of questions. There are several questions about Pete Doherty. I don't. Um, as has, far as I know, he, has he died? Is like uh, among? I missed all the Robin Williams. Drama has. Hang on, I'm gonna Google it. Two seconds. He, just, he, just decided, thought, he decided to, fair, to he kill himself. A while ago. If you Google Pete Doherty's dead, I guarantee yes. you there's at least four four news articles about his death, but he's come back to life every time. Here's a QPR fan. Alright, thanks for that. No worries. Daddy's dead to me. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> nice, foot, nice football bent there. Um, yeah. as Did you get as, that from as far as I'm aware, um, I, he's, he's alive and. Well, I was going to say, well, he's alive and being Pete Doherty. How old is he? Like thirty-five. Like question. Sorry. Right. That do you hate how the media treat Pete? Bracket R and bracket Doherty. <laughs> as though we don't. As know if who this, it is. As if there's a Pete Doherty and a Peter. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know. I know why that is. To be fair, it's because he was always Pete Doherty when he was in the Libertines and all that. And then when he released his solo album, uh, Lasted English Roses or whatever it was called, he changed his name to Peter Doherty. Did he want to go for the more formal feel with the later album, or...? I think so, because he wore a hat a lot more, but I have no uh, real evidence Going to Going back to that, that good old, uh, the good old, good old pre-war era, you know, where everyone wore hats. Yeah, what is with the resurgence of... Like, I'm, like, I wear a beanie everywhere I go, so I can't really say too much, but, like, what is it with people wearing, like, top hats and fedoras and, like... Hipsters. But, like, what... Like... I don't. Fashion is the weirdest thing in the world to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's the weirdest thing in the world to people who are in fashion. Like, have you seen yeah, fashion? Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. It's everywhere. fucking weird. It's fashion a advances thing to be in because you're essentially telling people what they're going to buy from you. Like, it advances too quick for itself. I think. Yeah. Like one minute you can be wearing something that's like whatever wants to happen, and the next minute it's just you're a twat. Pretty I don't. Much. I don't like the trend of the fact that skinny shorts and skinny jeans. Are a thing. Uh, I I have really big thighs, in a bootylicious kind of way, and yeah, no, I get you. I cannot find shorts to fit my thighs. I've I have long legs and I fit like big thighs. I wear skinny jeans. That's all I can wear. I can't wear normal jeans anymore. I I'm because like, your thighs are so big. No, because they're just that uncomfortable for me. I'm swollen yeah. as fuck. Um, I, I pretty much wear jeggings. <laughs> what the fuck is jeggings? Jean leggings, come Jean on, leggings. get with the times. What? <laughs> it, uh, like women wear. Oh you must know what they mean. I'm like a like I. It's just... essentially what they go to the gym in, isn't it? What? No, no. What the Who fuck are the... you talking about? <laughs> what you mean, like spandex? <laughs> That's yeah. It, what are jeggings then? I'll put an image of it into the um. They're leggings. Oh, right, no, you can't do that because no, they no, are leg. Right, I'll, I'll give you a detailed description. They are leggings that look like jeans, but they're not jeans because they're leggings. There you go. That's about as detailed as I can get with that one. What the fuck kind of link is that that you just... <laughs> my god, Jack, what the... There you are, oh there you are. <laughs> Do you know what's so annoying is how bad this is for how... Like, I can't show this to people on YouTube, but Jack has just put a link into the Skype chat, fuck and it's me. about 7,000 characters long, and it starts off with data image JP. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well have linked me to your no, documents. Do now. Basically, they're tight jeans. Yeah, but they're not. They're, they're like, not jeans though. They're not made of denim. The ones that women wear aren't. Yeah. Um, the, but you are you saying you wear them? Jack? No, I wear jeans that are not far off being as tight as that. I've just checked, and that link you put in the Skype chat is over six thousand characters long. Is it? Jeez. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. No you are so <laughs> I never, I never did a thesis at uni. <laughs> Until I was like uh, 14 or so. No, that's that's not. I've not worded that right. Basically, I was a skateboarder until I was 14. Yeah, I did word it right. Until I was 14, I was a skateboarder type person. Well, from the age of like 12 to 14, pretty much. And I used to just wear those really, really baggy jeans. And I still, like, I don't wear those now, but my jeans have to be a little bit loose. Like, I'm not mad about skating oh, I can't. those. 
I can't deal with it just the way it looks around my feet. It just, like, I, just, I, I can't deal with the skinny jeans around my thighs and my crotch. Like I need some space for the voice to breathe. I can't. Yeah, oh, no, I agree with that. Could yeah, you speak space. like more of a fifty-year-old dad? I need some space for the boys to breathe. <laughs> what, mate? Look, if, if, I want, if I want my bollocks <laughs> trapped in a cage of felt and jean, then cage I'd match. do that. Like, I'd wear. Yeah, you don't. I'd wear boxes made of, made of denim, but that. I don't. Boxes made of denim. Fucking hell. I just, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm a fashion. I, I am a fashion <laughs> icon. Yeah, I want, I want someone else to pick a question because mine haven't been appreciated thus far. Hang on, wait. I found the best question here. It's from 11 days ago. Would you rather have mechanical arms or rollerblades attached to your feet? Oh, that is roller a blade. question, isn't it? Rollerblade. No, mechanical arms, surely. Yeah, Roller. I'm taking mechanical arms. Could you yeah. lift any? Could you lift any weight with mechanical arms? Presumably. Yeah, presumably, yeah. Then I'll and, I'm, that, and I'm assuming that with mechanical arms, you can also use them in a way that you kind of run on your arms. Yeah, and do you know what else? And this yeah. is this is the key point. If you had mechanical arms as opposed to rollerblades on your feet, you wouldn't look like a fucking dickhead who rollerblades everywhere despite yeah, being an adult. I feel so. that you can only wear rollerblades with um, jean shorts and a tank top. And when you're the age of 12. Yeah. But anymore, I'm, or imagine, else if I'm, you're imagining, in I'm imagining the mechanical arms being more like go-go gadget arms, rather than rather than anything like RoboCop or you know Bionic Man style. I um whenever I sit down, like even right now I'm sitting like an Indian, like you know about my legs crossed. And um, <laughs> if I had roller blades on my feet, then my knees would be really sore right now. And this is how I sit. Like I don't sit straight up in any way I sit like an Indian around the campfire all the time so that's Basically, just what you're saying, it would be too awkward for you in your life to have rollerblades constantly on your feet yeah I'm not ready for it right now no, no. you know it, it doesn't it, yeah. it, it, it intrudes on my lifestyle a little bit there too are certain much. there are certain times when you need to brace your feet against the floor and I imagine rollerblades would just make that a lot more awkward yeah you go to yeah. stretch and you fall over yeah. like. but are they, t are they but I suppose if they do it as like a it's a natural thing for you to have it rather than what so you here like you go clench, you're like, clench your toes and the wheels stop moving kind of yeah thing. A yeah bit like, a like you you, you are thing. born with okay, it yeah. and the whole yeah right not that you just like suddenly you wake well, up you got if, wheels if, on if your I feet wanted, if i wanted something like that i'd buy those shoes with the wheels in the heel exactly <laughs> and then yeah. God, you, know, you, you walk, you walk <laughs> along your toes for a bit heels heels down toes up and you just glide you know, look so cool. I don't, I don't see why you'd need rollerblades for that. You'd look so good with your jeggings and. To be fair, there's no question there. You'd have, you'd have mechanical arms every day. And I go against it. I, I just found on a on a website the f the 15 most difficult would you rather questions. Do you guys want to go through them? Yeah. Yep. Go. Yeah. Are we doing this? Are we doing this like a quick fire round or? No. For, well, <laughs> look, if if there's a we can, do, we can discuss the technicalities and the. Uh... And everything that goes into these questions as we go along. Here, I'll put it in there so that I'm not the one asking every single one, but I'll ask the first one, right? Would you rather live one 1,000 year life or live 10 100 year lives? 10 100 year lives. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because no, by, go, because go by the time that I get to, say, like the fifth life, I'll have shit figured out. But see, by, the time, by the time you get to the five. Hundred years old in the one life, you'd have done exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. No, but are no, you no. remembering the stuff from every time you you die, essentially? Yeah. See, I don't think you are, and this is no, my okay. problem oh. with people who believe the in reincarnation. Then. Like, if you're reincarnated as something else, you're not who you were before because you've you're got not the same memory of it. So how exactly. can you, you know, if if you're in life number two, that's going to last a hundred years, you're not going to know who the fuck you are because you're a fucking baby. You can't have stupid information like that in your head. So I think the one. 1,000 year life one. Yeah, I'd go for that. Yeah, yeah because by but, the time uh, you're at the year 500, you're going to fucking know what's up, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think as, as a 1,000 one, one year life, though, you, there's, you'll get to the point where you can't learn anything else and then for that. I think living 10, 100 year, in, your, 100 year lives, you go over learning everything. My question is, in the 1,000 one year life, do you age at the same rate as a normal human being? Like so, by the time you get not. by the time you get to a hundred, are you like a hundred year old, or does it take? Are you, you in a wheelchair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you like wheelchair bound and just weak? Like I'm assuming not because I'm assuming <laughs> you're you're you know a hundred years to you a hundred years to everyone else is a thousand years to you. 
Yeah, so if you're 100 in your 1,000 year life, you'd look about 10. I'd, I'd definitely live yeah. a 1,000 year life. Okay, yeah, yeah um, it, like if I can't remember my previous lives, then the 1,000 year one. Yeah, I think your life should be a collection of your aesthetic sort of beliefs and like these arbitrary personal goals that you seek to achieve in your memories like everything that makes you you that should be what you take with you when you go if you're doing that 10 times for 100 years each time it's going to be different every time and it's just not you know you don't bring any of it with you when it mm. carries over presumably. if you live 10 100 year lives yolo has no meaning anymore so you know I don't, well, that I, is the main I, I, reason why yeah. i'm voting <laughs> i don't want to live in a world where yolo doesn't exist i don't want to live in a world where drake isn't correct about but surely one one thousand year life like by your by about 100 you'd have achieved everything that you think you can yeah, yeah, but imagine the stuff well, you can see over one thousand year life. Yeah, and if you're aging at a, say a tenth of the speed, oh, yeah, then you're fine. Th- yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, if you're, you're aging at a tenth know, of the though. speed, by the time you're a hundred, you'll only be ten years old. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to do stuff differently, I don't think, because you'd actually be a hundred, so you can't you, go and do. Or do you progress to say like twenty-one? And you can't do something this twenty-one for. Is it like the Superman years. thing? Do you get to like the age of thirty and then just stay at the age of thirty? Yeah, until, I'm glad you said you Superman because I was just about to use Edward Cullen as my base, and if I we did that, never I... use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, we should have yeah. gone with Edward Cullen. Really, that's where I was going <laughs> with twenty-one. To be honest, oh, you can actually take the answer, and I, I put oh, right, ten hundred well. year lives. Right, do you really? Oh, oh, wait, Jack, hang yeah. on. Whoa, what? What the fuck? I clicked live one thousand year life, and it says I'm wrong. Yeah, me yeah, too. I'm, I'm right correct here. with 10, 100 years old. Do you really want to look like a dried fruit for 930 years? Plus, what if you get a tattoo and really regret it around four, year 400? I got those, a, those I got a tattoo the best like. Reasons for... I got a tattoo three years ago and I regret it now, motherfucker. I'm still prepared to go for <laughs> a thousand years. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if you're, if you're living the one 1,000 year life, then even though you're 100, but you're, you're 10 in sort of human terms. They won't stop you from doing age restricted things because you're actually 100. So I don't think there's anything more you can achieve yeah. once you get to a certain age. So I'd live 10, 100 year lives, so I'm correct according to BuzzFeed. Well. The thing, like. BuzzFeed is, fuck, BuzzFeed is fucking wrong, so. Second question. <laughs> uh, would you rather have hiccups? This is really hard. <laughs> would you rather have hiccups for the rest of your life or feel that you need to sneeze and not be able to for the rest of your life? Ah, uh, fuck that question. Hiccups. No, you feel like you need to sneeze. No, hiccups are driving insane. You could you could sleep if you were trying to sneeze. I think you need to sneeze, but you wouldn't be able to sleep. Yeah, exactly. Hiccup. I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong, Jack. Time is a flat circle. Uh, hiccups are just the worst. Yeah. Hiccups, apparently, if you drink a teaspoon of vinegar, it cures your hiccups. I think that's a subjective apparently, apparently thing, though. There was a guy who had hiccups for, like, 45 oh, years. Yeah, had, yeah, that was mad. Yeah. But like, uh, for, for what you do when it finishes? For, for those of you who <laughs> yeah, don't know, right? Where does your life go from there? You are known as the man <laughs> who's had hiccups for forty-five years. Where do you go from there? He, you have achieved everything he can achieve. Yeah. He, he'd go on to live another hundred years. This year Buzzfeed life. thing, right? Like, it, for those of you who don't know, it's it's a little questionnaire thing, and you tick the answer that you give, right? And it's and in this one, would you rather have hiccups for the rest of your life or feel like you need to sneeze and not be able to for the rest of your life? I've ticked feel like you need to sneeze, and they've said wrong. Have the hiccups. Look at the bright side. You can start a successful career as a professional beatboxer now. How is that wrong? How does that make me wrong? You haven't given me one reason as to why I'm wrong here. Is that also suggesting that every beatboxer has the hiccup? I I just... (laughs) I like how it's uh, like an objectional thing. um, And and it's like an opinion-based thing. And in this questionnaire, your opinion is... Yeah, BuzzFeed is absolutely correct. Congratulations, everybody. Because people would hate hiccups more than they hate the feeling of need to sneeze. Alright, let's do the next one. Uh, Would you rather have the ability to read minds, you will be illiterate, or just have the ability to read? Yeah, the ability to read all day, every day. I'm not sure. We we already have the ability to read right now. But if you can, if you don't know how to read, would you understand what words are? Imagine all the. Yeah. Right. um, Imagine all the things that you use like reading with for, like. It's a ridiculous amount of things. Like you'd get lost on the tube. You'd every get day. lost on the tube. You <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be able to really use a phone properly, like to text people. Yeah. You can't. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, texting. Do you need to be able to read the text nowadays? Yeah, if you're in a train station, you have to read like a hundred people's minds before you find someone who's actually going where you're going. 
and he's had to <laughs> follow. <laughs> so, just... are you just, are you just, is this your sole purpose for using mind reading to stalk people? <laughs> um, I like the I like the thought of being able to read people's mind. I think that if you read people's minds, it's a little bit more easily profitable. It's it's more it's easier to make profit from the ability to read people's mm. minds. I think because yeah. if you like every pop star, like pretty much every celebrity most of the time is a production that's targeted and channeled towards a specific target audience that it's not mind reading but they know that when something's going to be big you know what i mean like yeah. pop music is essentially science that's figured out the minute how... you hear a katie perry like you heard yes. Katy perry's raw song yes. you'd be like that's gonna be massive that's a, ba- that's a banger yeah. yeah exactly and that's it's not mind reading but it's it's sort of it's psychological awareness that just understands that something is objectively going to succeed and i think with the ability to read minds you as a person could make a lot of money but i would rather have the ability to read because um, i read yeah all day, i guess day. I'm, I'm gonna interrupt everyone i've just clicked on <laughs> you so did I. Ticked the ability to read <laughs> and it's, it's wrong, wrong again it says what did you pick books what are you a nerd you're a big nerd all right big nerd you know this having superpowers always wins Buzzfeed. Fuck me, Buzzfeed. Jesus fucking I mean, Christ. have the ability to right. read minds. You are essentially they're saying you could be a stupid Professor X. Is that what they're saying? Uh, hold on now. I'll I, just if re- I am the guy who can read, right, and I'm at the final boss fight, and the final boss is the guy who can read minds. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna think all of my thoughts as if it's a book, and yeah, I open a, bit a of page, paper. and yeah. my next thought is written on the page. Read that motherfucker. Oh wait, you can't <laughs> even read. Owned calling me a nerd i just out nerded you buzzfeed i can't believe buzzfeed is just calling me a nerd i Fuck just off, I, I just <laughs> i just read the next question i don't want to answer it i've read the next question i've ticked a particular answer <laughs> oh, and <God>. i'm wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh. right yeah, so the not... next question is uh would you rather watch your parents have sex every day for a year or join in once to make it stop <laughs> <laughs> what does it, right. my, what does it gonna, mean by I'm join gonna, in? Right, what is I'm the? Gonna tell, I'm going to tell you my answer, and then oh, and then you're going to tell you why oh, they no. said it was wrong, and then I will explain why I chose that answer. I picked join in once and make it stop. No right? fucking way. Their response was earplugs in a blindfold and a blindfold, dummy. You stipulated watch blindfold. You have to watch like. There's no Eyes are kind of that. important in the word Fact, watch. Like, yeah, exactly. It kind of saying watch your parents have sex every day. Kind of at least the earplugs. Okay, earplugs I can understand. Blindfold, no. You've said watch. There's no just like it's not like they go oh yeah watch. You just have to stay in the room, stick your hands over your ears and eyes and go la 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 la. Like that's not that's not fucking it. You have to watch. Plus, if well, doing that doesn't make it stop, then they have some serious problems. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to, here, just while we're on this, I'm, right, I'm, I'm going to... Plus, right, it could be like your stepmom or something, and then that's that's fair game, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. I'm going to tick <laughs> the uh, I'm gonna tick the opposite of what Jack ticked, because I have a working theory here that BuzzFeed thinks every answer is wrong. So no, I've it's right. It, and no, it actually says correct. Yeah. Okay, right. Plus, maybe they'll take you out for ice cream after. The next one. Least more. What's the next one? Would you rather eat chocolate flavored poop or eat poop flavored <laughs> chocolate? How can you uh, even differentiate between these two? Cho- it's obviously going to be the chocolate chocolate flavored poop. Chocolate flavored poop. Sure. Yeah. I yeah. already eat the poop that comes out of my girlfriend's bum. So. Oh fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> That's such an evil laugh. It's like she. Know, it's like it's like she doesn't even know you do it. <laughs> uh, she does. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the chocolate flavored poop though. Oh yeah. no, we're wrong. What? You're still eating chocolate. Wait, what? <laughs> no, but I, the, like, sometimes the smell of shit makes me want to vomit. Why mm-hmm. are you putting that flavored shit into my mouth? I mean, if it was, it. would it be? It depends on whether it'd still be like so bad for you, like so unhealthy for you. Like if it's if you had. Like but they're not actually yeah. using shit. Flavor, like they're not using shit and grinding it down and making the flavor and putting it in the chocolate, are they? They're just making a flavor that they assume tastes like shit. I mean, I don't know. This is a fucking disgusting quest. But even the next one's horrible as well. This, this. Right, the a... next one, question number six. You're on a desert island with a beautiful woman, or a man. Would you rather their top half fish or bottom half fish? This what? is one that comes up on uh, bottom PK. Half bottom half fish. Yeah, bottom, bottom half, half fish. fish. You, yeah. Just because yeah, they're absolutely. beautiful doesn't mean you have to fuck them. Yeah, yeah bottom Correct. half fish. Right. Yeah, yeah. That is the stupidest Well, because mermaids are a thing. There isn't such a thing as a, a fish with a, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah, that I'm is. I'm gonna say if if I'm if I'm gonna ejaculate inside something, I want to be able to look into their eyes, and I don't want that to be the eyes of a fish. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's science. On to the next. No, question. yeah, that is that is science right there. Who'd have yeah. thought that it would be the other Jack that pulled down the tone of this? <laughs> Um, Not me. I, I, yeah, I did. I knew this was going to happen. This is my glorious return to yeah. the podcast, and I've decided to drag you all down to the level of humour that I've always had. Would you rather fart popcorn, <laughs> <laughs> or have your past and future web browsing history available to everyone? I'd rather fart popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. Yeah, I'd rather have the second one to be. Honest. I mean, there's some dark shit on there, but <laughs> I'll yeah, get over it after a week or so. To be honest, yeah, like I suppose, I mean, how much can someone abuse you for? Yeah, I like I I you know I, it's bad. It would be embarrassing, but it's much better than the alternative, in my opinion. And you know, most of it is just like you know. I think some of the things I've googled is like, is popcorn a vegetable, or <laughs> who would win in a fight, a bear or a badger or a liger? Like this is the type of thing I regularly Google, so I'm not really afraid to show that to people. I suppose it's just kind of similar to the the parents having sex one. Could you just get over with with a day and just be done with it after that? Yeah, I have a I have a problem with uh, what BuzzFeed has answered as correct. Oh, is it going to be? BuzzFeed thinks that fart pop, fart popcorn is correct. Could because and it and it says free popcorn, you numbskull. <laughs> but apparently, eating shit that tastes like chocolate isn't okay. Yeah, yeah. no, this is. Oh. And also, right, given the logic that they used for the parents one when they said, "Oh yeah, blindfold and earplugs," right? I'm just gonna say, oh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna just clear my web browsing history before I show it to everyone." So in your face, Buzzfeed, you fucking horrible cunt. But this is past and future web browsing history. I assume it means you're not gonna be able to delete it before. I don't give a fuck. Who gives God's someone the, the who gives off. someone the power to fart popcorn? No one. Man, I I can imagine I can imagine each fart being a singular popcorn and me farting, pulling the singular popcorn out of my trousers and just throwing it at someone. You can't you can't watch a film until you fart it like two hundred times. <laughs> you can. I'm pretty sure that you throwing popcorn doesn't mean that there's no other popcorn in the world. <laughs> it's still available at stores. Yeah. Yeah. It's still available to purchase from other outlets. You don't stand in front of the cinema just bending over in front of a popcorn box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a woman behind the the counter and she has to fart to give you the popcorn. <laughs> Would you rather go to Hogwarts and still be a muggle or live in a world of Pokemon but only able to catch magic arps? First one, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Because the like I'm just going to throw this out there and people can agree or disagree all they want, but reality is fucking boring. And if you gave me the option to go to some magic wizardry school with that fuck like that Diagon Alley thing, have you seen that in the movie? That's fucking yeah. sweet. Like that's a that's a fucking street that I want to walk down because it looks fucking badass. So yeah, I'd go and happily be a mug. I'd be going to the same school as Emma Watson. I wouldn't care. Didn't Hermi- Hermione? Wasn't she a muggle? And she was. She like was. Mu- she was. She was muggle born. Her parents were muggles. She was a. She was a witch. It's different. Hey, don't you call her a witch. Oh, no, wait, she was a witch. In that That's what She's also called, yeah. absolutely stunning. Yeah, but surely by the end of your Hogwarts training or whatever, you'd be a wizard anyway. No, and that's not how it works. That... You need to have you need to have magical blood and magic inside you, and you let it out through the wand. That's not how it works. Jack, do you Sorry. wish you didn't what know this? What the fuck would what? I be doing in Hogwarts, though, if I'm only a muggle? Yeah. I don't know, you'd probably be like Filch, you know? He's a fucking janitor or some shit. Yeah, I'd, no, I'd happily do that. Well, no, I'd rather be a student, because... It'd be a good experience. I don't see why I couldn't just be like a rugby coach, a uh, Quidditch coach or shit. Like, I can I can teach people how to punch people. Like, hit a ball in the air. Fuck it, it's not hard. Yeah. What but does Magic Carp do? Because, you know. Magic Carp, fucking nothing. Nothing. Was he the one that was really slow and. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Um. I, I'm, before I read out the next question, um, I think the answer is very obvious. Yeah. Would you rather have a vagina on your forehead or a row of penises down your back like a stegosaurus? Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, honest, I, th- I think this answer is incredible. I, I, I think the second one, clearly, isn't it? I mean, because the first one, you'd have loads of dudes trying to fuck you in the face. That would be. I'd have that anyway, to be fair. <laughs> I I'd, should probably I'd stop travelling st- in certain social circles. But... I'd have the stegosaurus. Yeah. Because it's yeah, not take you can cover it up. Yeah, or I'd li- you'd literally be Dickosaurus Rex. Oh, I'd love that. What a name? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you'd get fucking and famous, wouldn't you? And don't forget, if you were giving a girl a piggyback, well, he, you know, 
you're doing well for yourself. All right, number ten. Would you rather <laughs> have a bell go by the way, off? By the way, before we continue, um, Buzzfeed says that the Dicosaurus Rex is correct. Yeah. 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 There you go. Sure. I knew Buzzfeed would come around because your childhood dream of being a dinosaur has come true. <laughs> yeah. How did it know? Um, right. Would you rather have a bell go off every single time you were aroused, or feel a sharp pain in your side every single time someone said your name? This one's obvious to me. Doesn't a bell go off with you guys every time you're aroused, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually don't know. For me, it's the second one because nobody ever says my real name to me, anyway. So. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, but no, you got to take it as if someone says your name every day. Um, to be honest, I don't really leave the house that much. <laughs> you gotta take it as if you have like a life and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd have to. I don't know. How would you explain the bell going off? <laughs> I would. I think it's kind of like the Metal Gear Solid thing. We have a question mark go off above your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but every time you get aroused, you just have to look of like confusion on your face. That so makes sense. Yeah. You're like, oh god, where's the? Yeah. No, the easy, the easy thing to do is with the bell going off. Just check your phone every time. Yeah, ah, uh, nice, yeah. You've done That'd that. That'd be really awkward when there's a sex scene on TV. And you kind of ding, 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 oh, yep, text again. No, yeah. that's weird. It's, it's time. <laughs> it goes off every two seconds. Ding, 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 ding. I want to know how loud this bell is. Yeah. If it's loud enough for just you and kind of the person in, like, a couple of people in the nearby vicinity to hear, then yeah, fine. If it's, like, A church bell. Yeah. Yeah, a church bell. People are hearing that for miles And around. you're at a funeral, and you're not quite oh, sure. Oh, God. Oh, God. Whether it's the church bell or... <laughs> to be fair, that's your fault for getting aroused at a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, the sharp pain in your side every single time someone said your name, right? So if someone says your name a lot, like, pain is more controllable than... Like, anyone who's ever had a migraine will know that it hurts like fuck, but you sort of just learn to live with it when yeah. you realize your fate. Like, you know, you realize that you're going to be suffering with this for a while. Mm. And it gets a little bit more bearable that way. I think you can control pain a lot more. Well, you can. It depends on what it is. It's the sharp pain. It's a sharp it's pain. Like, yeah, no, yeah, but it depends what kind of pain it is and how controllable it is, obviously. It's a sharp pain, and it's controlled by when someone says It's a sharp funny, pain in your side. So, like, Funny fact about me, I suffer from the worst pain of all time. Pregnancy, is it loneliness, no cluster headache, childbirth. It is the worst pain of all time. It actually cluster, is, and I feel really headaches, bad yeah. every time I make fun of Jack for yep. this. But uh, yeah. do you get brain freeze? It says it may be the most painful condition known to medical science. Yeah, it's yeah. called cluster headaches, isn't it? It is awful. Yeah, I've heard of them. I get migraines every now and then, but they're nothing. What? I get a, what a cluster well, headache? It's basically like <laughs> it's migraines, but like ten of them at once, just uh, just above your eyes. What is that? They just they come on any time. Yeah, every couple of years, I get them for about a month. All oh, right. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, well, basically, rough. you're what incapacitated for that amount. Uh, of yeah, pretty much. Right. I've have, to have like an oxygen tank. I think it's God's way of saying that you're a bad person. Uh, no, you trying to get me electrocuted by lightning was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, like I, you know, that's probably the evilest thing I've ever done though. You know? Yeah. Yeah, get, trying to get someone to drop a lightning is pretty evil. I'm taking the sharp pain one, and Buzzfeed tells me that I'm wrong. Oh, I should have done the right well, one. Someone click the other one. Would you rather have accordions for legs, <laughs> or have I've a huge belly one. button, ten inches long, that swayed to the beat of popular music? Popular music. <laughs> popular music. Every now and then, it'd be Katy Perry, and everything'd be alright. <laughs> yeah. I I don't see this is hard for me right because I'm really sensitive with stuff like like my belly button that's off limits like I can't even <laughs> touch that it's real sensitive it makes me makes me like really uncomfortable does it bell go off every time someone touches it yes <laughs> <laughs> and a sharp pain in the side at the same time <laughs> I think I would uh, have the belly button thing to be fair because I don't listen to popular music that much so what's an accordion uh, it's like the weird the the thing, the homeless people that, yeah, have the big them. things yeah. that are like the uh, the compression ones. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the lady the and the tramp thing that he yeah, plays. Yeah, when yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of homeless people have them. Yeah, I know that. Um, yeah, well, no, I don't really want an accordion for a leg, to be honest. I, don't, I just don't understand how it would work. You walk and it just goes. <laughs> I'm, imagine, I'm imagining it's like you know that scene in Family Guy where Stewie starts following fat people around with a tuba. 
Yeah. It's exactly oh, yeah. Like that. Imagine yeah. it's like that. The I mean, fat person. I'd, I'd find it hilarious for a day, and walking at different speeds, seeing what different things sounded like. <laughs> And then I'd get into bed, and every time I'd shift my legs, I'd just hear. Oh fuck it out! Yeah, no, I don't like belly button thing. Mo- most yeah. of your life would consist of you walking and your dog looking at you with that sideways, you know, when dogs look at you with their head tilted sideways, like <laughs> when you play music to them. Yeah. Dogs do that, right? It's not just my dog. No, yeah. So, I, yeah, it's got to be number. Oh, I, I I'd, just I'd have the out second one. Question. I'd have the second one. Yeah. I'd rather be flown into space. Would you rather have sex with a goat and no one thinks you did it, or not have sex with a goat but everyone thinks you did it? Top one. Mm. Top one. Yeah. yeah. Said average Tuesday. I oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's Wednesday. Is it? Yeah. You did it yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it I Friday know, I'd night? I'd rather not have sex with a goat. There was a fact that one of you had for it when we were doing the research for it last week. I used the term research in the loosest possible way there, but when we were <laughs> we looking panicked up about twenty minutes that, before. <laughs> there was one about a goat and the fact that it has the most human like sex you know, organ. Yes. So it probably wouldn't even be that bad. <laughs> I'd have oh, sex well, with a goat. Thanks for uh, thanks for rationalising that bestiality there, Elf. Yeah, no I like the fact that yeah, that came cheers. after you two agreed straight away that the sex with the goat was the right one <laughs> well look yeah like I mean you don't want your reputation to be in tatters here I feel like Elle could edit this really badly and it could just be yeah. one of us going yeah I'd have sex with a goat yeah, yeah. just not like, that, none of the BuzzFeed stuff just straight to yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 I'd, yeah I'd, I'd fuck a goat I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah I'd have the goat I'd fuck you guys have just given me a great idea for the intro oh, Jesus. <laughs> god alright number 13 no wait hold on actually I'm gonna just select the top one to make sure that yeah BuzzFeed says I'm correct yeah I'm correct with goat sex yeah yeah yeah, yeah goat <laughs> I like BuzzFeed hey who knows you, you might, might enjoy, enjoy it, it. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to deny that that goat looks a little cute <laughs> I do like right, goats would, oh, would you rather live in a world where huge friendly gummy bears walk around or live in a world where hoverboards exist hoverboards. this is the most obvious yeah hoverboards, hoverboards all day yeah. every day oh it's wrong yeah. again I'm wrong how is that Delicious. How is that wrong? But they if they're yeah, really friendly, not... if you fucking try and eat them, are they? Do you know what like... isn't delicious? Cannibalism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, at what point has anyone gone? Oh yeah, it would be great if we could just like eat each other as we walk around. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Save yeah, save a yeah, lot of world yeah. hunger. Oh. See, the purpose of, of their their rationale for this being wrong, for the hoverboard thing being wrong, right, is that gummy bears are huge and you can eat them. But this is essentially the same thing as would you rather live in a world where huge friendly, friendly bears cows walk, around. walk yeah. around when you eat cows every day anyway. The yeah. only difference with that is that I don't have to eat a cow while it's walking around because that's fucking wrong and, you know, that would be really, like, disturbing for me. And I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't, get, I don't get gummy. chased by cows again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jack, you ever been chased by a gummy bear? <laughs> I have not, actually. I've eaten a gummy bear. When they stipulated huge, I was imagining like um, the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters huge. Yes, me too. I was thinking yeah. like small building um, size. And I'm not sure that's edible in any sense. No, because it no. would take ages for you to even... You I know, wasn't you, imagining you could take one, one bite. person per gummy bear. Yeah. But even then, you know, it's ridiculous. Plus they would cause massive destruction. Yeah. Well, we're cons- we're assuming they're considerate, but I doubt the consideration would last if we started trying to eat them. Eat them, yeah. Yeah. Would you rather live the rest of your life with Cheeto dust on your fingers or have taste buds in your ass? Uh, Cheeto dust. Yeah. Cheeto, Cheeto dust. dust. Yeah. Because because the your alternative ass... is shoving stuff up your ass, isn't it? Put a nice bit. Wait, what? Well, the taste buds are in your ass. But I don't think you'd eat through your ass. You're no, still... <laughs> no, it doesn't say that you don't have taste buds on your tongue anymore. Yeah, yeah it's but that you, it's that you taste it's just everything that, your that taste. comes. Yeah. The only thing that changes in the heat, you don't so start like, your taste, consuming food. So basically, what you're saying is you're tasting shit every time. Oh yeah, no, so you like, taste, taste shit all day. So it's like you'll taste your the priest's dick. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, um, no. you'd, um, you'd taste shit all day. Yeah, right. So clearly, it's the geo yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, clearly. Yeah. The last one's shit. And now, the hardest would you rather question you will ever be at. Alright, BuzzFeed, fuck off. Would you rather have a side soup or have a side salad? Soup. Seriously? Salad. Yep. I don't salad. eat salad. Yeah, I'm picking salad because soup is. Salad, salad, salad is basically I, a lot I, of trees. 
if I'm ha- if I'm having steak, what the fuck am I going to do with soup? Uh, eat on the side, because it's no. a side. No, like, I'm not going to go from having steak. Oh, that's a nice bit of steak. Oh, I'm just going to dip it in this soup over here. I don't eat steak. Oh, that's that's, that's only words. if you're having steak, isn't it? You could be having something you could dip in the soup. What if you're having bread for dinner? Yeah, a sandwich. Who has bread for dinner? What are I, you a peasant? I have many a time. Have you ever had a toast sandwich? A toast. <laughs> a toast. Uh, that's, to- a yeah. toast sandwich. That sounds you genius. Toast, you, you toast one slice of bread and put it between two slices of untoasted bread. And butter yeah, and you it. Put some salt optional and extras it in well. cold. Yeah, op- optional extras include butter. That or sounds genius. That sounds like it could be really nice. I'd urge everyone to try it. <laughs> and the if ingredients on the, the bottom of the page. If you let us know in the comment section how that works out for you. Yeah, yeah, if you if you need to if you need a recipe, feel free to tweet me. Yeah, uh, it's Jack <laughs> Brand underscore. <That> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Brand, it's got any on the end. I'm posh. Would oh, you rather sorry. be in prison for murder or be in prison for a murder you didn't commit? Murder I didn't commit. I don't feel like I could morally. Murder I didn't I commit because I'd, I'd have had to have murdered someone. someone to get there. Otherwise, and I'm not sure I'm okay with murdering someone. It depends who you've murdered, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm not like entirely where sure. Lewis going with this. Yeah, but I think yeah. the basis is that you've just murdered an innocent person. Yeah, but that, they, they, they didn't stipulate that, did they? Yeah, no, but then this, didn't. but then you can open up this question so many times. Oh, you you killed Kim Jong Il. He's dead. Kim Jong Un. Like you yeah, no, you, no, like no, you're that. going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, you terrible person, you. Oh, you've ended the reign of tyranny on North Korea. How yeah, dare you? You've released it. A sea of people from the hatred. All sea right, of he, people. He, here's one, right? We're talking about would sea people rather, again, aren't we? Would you rather know when you will die or know how you will die? How? When? Interesting. Knowing how, if it was getting hit by bus, I wouldn't be able to walk on a road ever. Mm. Well, no, because then you're just really careful crossing the road. Yeah, but I don't think it matters because you could be careful, but there's still human error, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it mostly we're assuming it mostly comes down to your human error. So but if, if, someone, if, th- some, if someone says, "Oh yeah, you'll you'll die by getting shot," I'd do my best to avoid a situation where I'm gonna get shot. But how do you know? There's whereas if you don't know, you don't know exactly living... how you're getting shot. So if you're in somewhere, if you were worried about getting shot, you'd never leave the house because that's well, the no, one, that's the place well, you well, no, I think to stop I don't, that, though, I, don't live, I don't live in America. And I have no massive sudden risk of getting shot. You've always got a sudden risk of being shot. That leads me. Maybe with, with, gun maybe with, maybe with like a vaccine, but yeah. <laughs> or with but a camera, because if I knew, that, if I knew kinda... the day that I like the day that I was going to die, you can prepare I'd for just it. Get, yeah, you no, can live I'd your just, life. I just though, get progressively yeah. more depressed as that day arrived. Yeah, yes, me I know, too, but I you could. Oh, no, I don't know. As much as that is true, you would get depressed and like you prepare for it, and you could. You could say everything you want to say to people. If you didn't know when you were going to die, or you knew sort of, if you didn't know when but knew how, then you'd constantly want to say bye to someone every time you went the house, left the house, because it could happen. I think you could live your life better if you knew when you were going to die, as opposed to how, because you'd just be trying with the how, you'd just be trying to avoid. Yeah, you'd be that so death. you'd be so yeah. within yourself and so worried about everything. You wouldn't experience anything new because you're worried something might happen. Exactly. Yeah. But you're but we're assuming that the they give you a date that's fairly uh, far in the future. What if it's next week? Yeah. What if it's next Wednesday? Then your yeah. Then your life goes to shit. Does it happen on the same day? Does this death where you know yeah, it's going to happen happen how, on the same day the as how, how it's going to happen? Uh, yeah. It's exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Or do or do they just say uh, you're going to die on a Wednesday? Um, I think it's no, then, then I'd five fifteen p.m. Then I'd definitely choose the. They'd still choose the same one. Like the the problem I always have with the would you rather questions is that there's not enough stipulation. As there's to never rules. any stipulations. I know. And yeah. that really annoys me. There's not a list underneath that says this is what happens. This is how it right. happens. Whatever. The next one is pretty straightforward, and I actually really like it. And it's obvious to me what it is. Uh, would you rather be famous in this lifetime or go down in the history book? Famous in this lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'd rather be around to see myself as being famous. There's a guy in... This is on a website called either.io or either, which I've never actually said. But um, that's E-I-T-H-E-R, not 
Eder as in E E D E R because I can't pronounce. Fuck this, right? The, there's a comment underneath it, and the guy has like profoundly said, "I'd rather be Socrates than Miley Cyrus." But here's the thing about being Socrates: he's nothing. Like he doesn't exist anywhere as anything because he's dead. He doesn't know how famous he is right now, whereas Miley Cyrus does, and she's balling and she's just rolling in money all of the time. She's having a so great think, time. I think. It? I think the best the best uh, reply to that comment that you read out is the one that's actually below it that just said or you could be Hitler instead of being Bill Murray yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I like I would rather be dead than stupid that is true but if I'm famous in this lifetime I'm assuming that it's me who's famous in but this you're, lifetime. you're already one of them so I am pretty yeah it's, it's not saying <laughs> you like you're Marley Cyrus it's saying that you're, you're you and you yeah. have a certain amount of control over what you'll be doing yeah, like, fuck it, I want to be famous. I don't really want to be famous, I just want to have a lot of money. I saw this one. Would you rather see how or what created civilization, or see how or what ends civilization? Oh, the created. No. Because mm. oh, the created's already pretty well explored, I think. So I'll go with yeah. what ends it. The the created yeah. one is interesting, how the universe came to be, because it's, it's really like, well, the theory is this, but it could be anything. And the, like, the, I'm not... The, the, the research always points to the Big Bang, but there's no yeah. real concrete, this is what happens, this is how it happens, this is when it happened. I think I'd rather know, like, because science, when it comes to, like, quantum physics and, and, you know, crazy science, stuff like that, there's a huge bridge between what we understand and what information about it we actually can comprehend. Like, I know it was the Big Bang theory, but I don't understand like what it was before that or how that even like I don't I just don't understand anything on that sort of level well I mean so, I mean it is you know sorry to interrupt the you know the before the big bang it was nothingness yeah. and it's fair enough to, it's all right to stipulate oh say well yeah but before the big bang there was nothing but as a human uh, as a human mind you, you can't, can't comprehend, comprehend nothing, nothing. Yeah. yeah yeah and that's the problem that everyone has with the big bang is that physicists and all that can say well yeah there was nothing before the big bang and that makes sense in for a physics point of view and from a, that kind of very precise perspective but to everyday you know everyday person you can't comprehend no, the, the the sense but of nothing both, yeah i said this last week with the both blind person arguments have nothing before them don't they because god, god if you mm. believe that god created the earth in the six days or whatever before he created the earth there was nothing and then before the big bang there was nothing so both arguments have the fact that they can't really explain what there was before there was something but before the Big Bang, there was something. No, there wasn't. There was... What was there? There was. There was still this uh, system. Sort of, I don't know. Uh, there was definitely something, obviously. I think. I'm but not going to sit here and listen <laughs> to, to me, To me <laughs> trying to decide for the Big Bang. <laughs> it's like, no, the, thing's like <laughs> the thing that I said about the blind bears in last week. They don't see anything. They see nothing. I can't comprehend what that nothing is. Let alone what nothing was before the universe. Yeah, but it is a really good comparison. I well, think. wasn't isn't the uh, the kind of I've read that the kind of thing is if you want to imagine what a blind per- someone who's blind from birth sees, is imagine what you can see out of your elbow. Like you have no sense of vision. You, there, there is no sense of vision from your elbow, if that makes sense. But yeah. so they, people say it's not like they don't see black, or they don't see white because they don't know what black and white are. But is you know, but like they a, must they must see it the black I think black. But they well, they have nothing to reference it to, so they can't describe it as black. Yeah, I think like, yeah, that has to be the case. Yeah, and one thing I've always wondered is people who are like blind and deaf from birth, you know, like the you know you see the adverts for the uh, mute and blind kids and stuff like that. How do they comprehend? How do they process thoughts? Because like all of our thoughts, we're all, we're all English. We've all been taught and grown up learning English and speaking English. So all of our thoughts are processed, you know, in our internal monologue in the English language. So like a German person's internal monologue will be in the German language. Yeah, it's also how, the same thing. How as does that person's kind of brain comprehend yeah, stuff? Yeah, comprehend thoughts. Do they? Is it just in vibrations and like feel? Because or do they the have some with... sort of inner monologue like? It's, yeah, it would be vibrations. It's and the same with dreams, yeah. though, because apparently all of our when we dream, we dream of things we know and see and feel and stuff. Yeah. But then, if a blind and mute person, how do they dream about? What do they dream about? Because they've seen nothing. Well, it's just referencing what 
they do experience, you know? Like, there's something in, like, there, well, there's like a tribe in... Because they've never seen faces before. It's just whatever they do see, because, like, it's, it's really hard to... I guess they would, like, dream about sound, well, not sounds, but, like, vibrations and yeah. attempted... Yeah, I see. There, there, the vibrations in, and like, feeling. Yeah, in New Zealand, there's some tribe, right? And they, their language system, they're amazing at directions because they don't have left, right, east, west. They have a combination of all of it, so they're able to just navigate things really well because they have a keen sense of direction because it's embedded into their language. And I think if you're deaf and dumb, and you deal in vibrations and nothingness or whatever, you're gonna have your own. Yeah, something of, must must emerge from those vibrations. As, as yeah, like I I think how we perceive everything around us, language plays a really, really, really pivotal role in that. That people mm. don't really understand how strong it actually is. You know, um, it like it determines your ability to see colors. Is it, as long as you have a word for a certain color, then you can see it. Like, um, and I've said stuff about that before about how some languages have different names for different shades of blue and therefore they're more mm. prevalent whereas here we just have like blue navy whatever yeah. but it's, it, it would be the same for somebody who can see or hear because they have their own way of processing things mm, yeah I've, I've always uh, speaking of colours I've always thought it's interesting it's like so we're on either.io and they've got clearly what is a colour of blue and a colour of red yeah. would you agree for each of the options well, sky blue and yeah yeah, so you'd describe it as sky blue, but how do you, like, because I've often had things where I've said, oh yeah, look at that X colour car, and someone's gone, what one? And then I've pointed it out to them directly, and they said, oh, that's not X colour, that's Y colour. Is, yeah, is my sky blue you know, your do sky you, blue? Yeah, is your sky blue my sky blue, or is my, you know, kind of, uh, you know, different, you know. Well, I often got that is my teal going to be a sky, your lime sky blue? green and yellow, I often get. I wouldn't say I'm colorblind, but there are certain colors where I'm not 100% sure on. Yeah, of. I have that mm. same problem. My left eye and my right eye see two completely different things, right? And my left eye sees the red option in this page is way closer to orange or even yellow. But what, my right red? eye, it's, it's like dark red. That is yeah, very, right right very dark red. Yeah, well, that's what I my, see with my right eye. With yeah, my, my, right eye, eye, my right eye is seeing the blue as a much darker... Not much darker, but it's definitely noticeable. I don't know. One of my it's contact lenses has fallen out. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying yeah. to close my eyes too much, and it's poked out. <laughs> <laughs> so you I can't do see have anything. A problem. Like I have a problem recognizing shades and telling them apart. Like I only learned pretty recently that supposedly there's no such thing as someone with like actual jet black hair, like or whatever. Like they just have brown hair. But to me, anyone with dark hair, it's black. Like everyone with dark hair has black hair I don't really see brown hair I couldn't huh. point out someone with brown hair you know what, wasn't that one of the facts last week it wasn't it to do with like Japanese people are the only people with black hair is that something that we read out honestly uh, no don't know sounds about right though the fact that I remember from earlier was Bruce Willis hates Japanese people <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true yeah yeah would you rather be a high school or below teacher or be a college professor. College, college professor. professor. Yeah, every yeah. other week. More scope to bang the students. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> scope on the other one? What? That doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, high, sc high school's like the end of secondary school. like. Yeah, but well, it no. depends where you're at. No, it <laughs> just... Is it against the law in America to have sex with a student if you're a college professor? Probably. It's, it's frowned it's upon. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm taking this from friends. It's frowned upon. It depends yeah, on the establishment, upon. I think. Yeah, I think every place... I think what happens is rules. if, if yeah. you do, then you'll you get in trouble with Bruce Willis. That's what happens, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You ever see that movie Loser? Um, the one that Teenage Dirtbag was the soundtrack for. It's got Mina Savari and Greg mm, Kinnear and uh, Jason Biggs guy. Yeah, Jason Biggs, yeah. Yeah, and uh, she's, like, banging Greg Kinnear. And I hate Craig Kinnear because I love her. Does he ever play someone that isn't a, a stuck-up, yeah. smug bastard about everything? He is really good at douchebag. Yeah, he is. I often wonder what actors like that like. They have to be like that in real life, don't they? They've got to pull Teenage... it from somewhere, haven't they? They got to yeah. pull their experiences from somewhere. So yeah. Teenage Dirtbag is one of them songs where it's just such a whiny American accent. 
it's like it's, the English it's, version of Jake Bug. It's in the related links of about ninety eight percent of music videos on YouTube as well. I loved that song at the time, but now I listen to it now, it's like Yeah, I had the uh, single of it. It's like Tom DeLong but like worse. Yeah, that's a very good analogy as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're agreeing college professor. Yep, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You guys have many good ones. I've just clicked through one uh, to one that I'm very confused about. Uh, would you rather punch a pilgrim <laughs> or yes then this is where it gets oh. interesting eat an avocado <laughs> what's wrong with avocados yeah. I don't know this is what I'm trying to figure out I mean what I don't like about... any fruit so it would be difficult for me it just depends whether you're angry or not doesn't it I don't I mean <laughs> if you're really <laughs> angry you'd be like fuck it I'm gonna punch a pilgrim I just, I just don't no understand. if you're really angry you're gonna uh, be like I'm so angry I could eat an I'm avocado I'm angry <laughs> eating an avocado <laughs> I don't understand if these are rand- if these are randomly generated then a lot of them have seemed very like connected in the way that they've been put together they're not they're all I added I don't understand how pilgrims and avocados are connected yeah yeah like it's usually unless didn't the pilgrims the bring antithesis. avocados to America isn't that a thing no. I do not know, but <laughs> then why would you not? Why would it not be a choice of punching an avocado and eating a pilgrim? Ah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'd punch the avocado though because cannibalism would be really disturbing, <laughs> <laughs> and it opens you up to a range of mental illnesses that will completely fuck your life up. Uh, what worries me more is that it's only fifty-seven percent eat avocado. <laughs> 43% punch a pilgrim. The pilgrims this, must have been dicks. This comes up with some mental fucking questions. <laughs> Would you rather beat a tiger in a fight who ate a man? Or beat a man in a fight who ate a tiger? <laughs> it depends I don't, who the man is. I don't, I don't know what kind of questions you guys are getting, but I'm getting some very odd yeah. ones. I Would you rather drive a bright red smart car or be spanked by Rosie O'Donnell every morning? <laughs> A bright would, red smart car. Would you rather always have bad hair or always have bad teeth? I always have bad teeth. I've always got bad teeth as well. I've always got bad teeth. But, I mean, I've got yeah, teeth. Yeah, but you guys stuff. have got nothing on me. <laughs> I have the worst teeth in the world. But me and Jack are both ginger as well, so. Yeah. But see, I think, like, right. I don't, the, I don't have a problem with being ginger. I like, don't at all. My beard's majestic, so. Neither of you guys are actually, like, you don't fit this stereotype or I can go out into the sun for longer than five minutes I can't yeah, like, I actually can't in that respect <laughs> but neither of you two actually look like if you imagine a ginger person neither of you two actually look like what I think a ginger person looks like yeah you but to be I mean? fair like, my, my picture of a ginger person is the guy from American Pie like that the uh, the whatever his name was like the stiff mite no Finch no the no. Uh, sh- the uh, Sherman uh, yeah Sherman yeah, Sherman, yeah. yeah. Funnily enough, my old passport photo actually used to, I actually used to look like him when I was younger. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna find that Twitter picture now for you. This it is might a tough one. A while, so don't hold your breath. Would right, you yes. rather lose your preferred thumb or lose the index and middle finger of your preferred hand? Ah, uh, see, I need my thumbs because I'm a gamer. Yeah, yeah. but then but could but then you'd lose finger. the index middle finger. I'd have to keep my thumbs. I think so. Yeah, you'd I have think to, because we play a yeah, lot of stuff. Yeah, I need my thumbs, yeah. I think thumbs are used more than the index yeah. on middle finger. You could just tape some spoons on your hand or something. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things you could think of, spoons are the most useful things. Not, not like a metal thing or something. Yeah, but Punk then the spoons gold. could come in and be like, oh, well, I could use this. You know, the spoon. No, I'm going with spoons. I could, I could use this for the side soup that I got instead of the salad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Here's my steak. Yeah. I'm going to chop it up with my finger that's now a knife and then yeah. at the same time put my middle finger into the soup and have a scoop of that. There we go, see? I have oh, a great one here, right? Would you rather live an extra 50 years or be guaranteed entrance to heaven? And the top comment is, heaven's not real. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's got a good point. He's well, that good does point. sound like me. Yeah. I, I'd say be guaranteed entrance to heaven because in this hypothetical would you rather question, heaven does exist. And yeah. if heaven exists, that means that hell also exists. And if hell exists, that means I'm going to hell. So I'm taking guaranteed <laughs> entrance to heaven. This fucking site you've linked us to. Would you rather have a wardrobe completely of flannel or have a wardrobe completely of denim? <laughs> to be fair, I already have a wardrobe full of flannel, so I'm yeah, going to go with that. <laughs> what is flannel? Like flannel shirts. Flannel's like checkered shirts, basically. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't have any of that. I've come across a question, and it 
if you don't read the beginning of it, it's just, would you rather embrace death or become a vegetable? <laughs> right? Embrace death. But it gets even more interesting if I include the first part, which is, if you raced go-karts, would you rather <laughs> embrace death or become a vegetable? If you raced go-karts... Would... Somehow racing go-karts changing changes whether I want to embrace death or become a vegetable. But with, uh, but with being a vegetable, you're dead inside. Oh, to be fair, I didn't even think about the uh, the vegetable aspect of someone being. You thought literally. You I thought about literally being some a cute, yeah, like somebody's a cucumber or something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good for you. <laughs> I'll help you see in the dark. <laughs> Would you rather? Have an excellent relationship with an imaginary friend, or have a terrible relationship with three real friends. I already have a fucking terrible relationship with all three of you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Would you rather be in a jail for a year, or live in complete isolation in the mountains? Isolation. Isolation. Yeah. I could get by. Because there's a chance the in jail thing? you'd be fucked by a man. Whereas in complete isolation <laughs> in the mountains, you'd that be fucked gonna by happen. a man. Yeah. yeah. You might meet that goat where you get the. You other might meet that goat. Question. Yeah. Exactly. I I don't know though. Like I I get sort of really restless with where I live, and I think that's because I've lived in something like nine or ten different locations throughout my life like I've moved around a lot I rarely stay in the one spot for I think the house I live in now this is the longest I've ever lived in one house and even then it's been stretched across several different like I lived in Scotland while I was living here and then I moved back here and then I sort of lived in London for a while um and I just get really sort of annoyed with where I am and I have to leave and I'm like that and I move around a lot and I think if I was is living in isolation that sounds like it's permanent and I don't know if I could do that because I need to move I need change in my life constantly every few years so so you'd be I happy with jail for a year I think if I went to jail for a year I'm hoping it would give me some sort of much needed perspective and discipline on my life and it would also give me a lot of free time to actually write stuff because I've always wanted to write a book or something. You can do that in complete isolation in the mountains though. Yeah, but I can never fucking leave it. So is it what I want? Well, you know? <laughs> it's Jack laughing because of the picture. <laughs> he does look exactly <laughs> like him. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that the is face. incredible. Oh my god, the face. That that has got <laughs> Jack to be has just put his somewhere. passport picture in the chat. And can I put this on the screen in the podcast, Jack? Yeah, mate, feel free. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that is you it's, looking. It's I've just scrolled back through my Instagram <laughs> to find it, so it's freely available there. Plus, that hairstyle oh, is such the 2000s. That's amazing. That's like <laughs> spiky hair. I was, I was 16 then, so that was what five years ago. So that. So that was yeah, 2009. Yeah. Would you okay. rather have the ability to teleport or be able to time travel? Teleport. Teleport. Yeah, teleport. Although, I like, I have to say, I fucking dig time travel. Like, if I have yeah. the opportunity to go see the future, like, I'm mad about the future. I have an obsession with the future and where technology is going to take us and all. Like, I'm really weirdly obsessed and fascinated by that. So... I am. Um, I am in a terrified I do, kind I do of way. I love a good post-apocalyptic futuristic movie. Yes. They're my favourite mm. movies. Yeah, I'm gonna... they are the best terrified though at the same time yeah me too because well, what, here's humans the thing, right? we were talking about this the other day the other week humans will not be needed at some point no 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 of course not but here, here's another thing right time travel is not really useful to you like if you go to a certain area and you're like ah oh, this is pretty good I'll set up shop here you can't you, you're gonna have no social security number you're gonna have a real hard time proving to somebody you're gonna be like that guy what's his name Jack the Ken something that guy who was found in the back of a Burger King and has no oh, idea who the um, fuck he is. Fuck yeah. Uh, we spoke about him before. Yeah, we spoke about him before, I'm sure. Everybody but surely like, surely he could be... Someone could just look up missing persons record and match him up with a picture. You'd think so, but You'd no. you think so, but it didn't happen. But yeah. America. So, that's yeah. what... No, but he's legitimately a time traveller, so that's what that's what it's <laughs> going to be like for you. He's not, is he? You know, you mentioned about how humans will uh, not be needed anymore in the future. There was actually a really interesting video that was released today by a YouTube usable called uh, CGP Grey. 
I don't know if you, any of you have ever heard of him. I haven't. Does a lot of really interesting videos, um, kind of teaching uh, various little subjects in kind of short, you know, like five minute videos. But this one's more like 15 minutes long, and it's about how um, computer and robot automi uh, automation is going to take over uh, yeah. the world, essentially. We've we've covered um, that on this show, haven't we? Um, uh, briefly, yeah, about how we're terrified. Talk. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I'll I'll check that video out. Yeah, I'll put the link in the Skype chat, so you can feel free to put it in the. See, here's one I think is really easy. Would you rather communicate with animals or speak every language fluently? Every language fluently. Yeah, because what use do you have talking to animals? If you whereas if you could any all the languages, you'd be a fucking well. You'd be a hero. Okay, I thought this was easy. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> was, your, was your option talk to animals? Yes. <laughs> That's just... I'd You'd rather Jack, be Dr. Like... Doolittle than James Bond, effectively. That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I, my first thought went to imagine all the foreign women I could seduce with my... Yeah, James Bond. Yeah. ...language skills, yeah. Yeah, and it would serve me in my quest to... I was thinking... house every two years. I was just thinking, look yeah. at all the cats I could speak to. <laughs> <laughs> So both involve pussy. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'd rather this pussy. No, I think, like, if you could talk to animals, it's just... Uh, would you be... Just because you can speak every language doesn't mean you can travel the world and use it in every language and use it all the time. What? Just because you can speak every language doesn't mean you could... Well, you'd be wasting your fucking life if you just stayed where you are. But you could. Speak yeah, if, I know, if but you, just because you, you just because you can doesn't mean you have the opportunity to travel the world. No, that's know, true. Isn't isn't the leader of isn't the uh, lead translator of the UN? Uh, he can speak, I believe, twenty three languages. If I remember off the top of my head, it's not enough for this. Um, but if you can speak more than that, and he gets paid a fucking bomb. Yeah. Like. Yeah, uh, uh, traveling with the UN, you know, and you know, the UN goes a lot of places. But the is world. there not a, 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 a serious amount of people who can speak just as many languages? Not as all the languages, but you're not going to find a job where well, no, someone you, has to speak, speak every language. If you can speak every single language fluently, and if you, you you're underestimating how Im how important in some fields uh, being multilingual can be. Um, if you can speak um, multiple languages and you can put that on your CV and you can say that I can fluently speak this, this and this language, that is a massive upside for employers, especially people with a global reach, especially global corporations. Not every because if you if you can if you can speak if you can switch between English and say Chinese, and you want to get a job, you know, somewhere that deals a lot with China, they're going to hire you immediately over another guy who's more experienced in the field. Um. Yeah, but I'd, that's where the point gets. Where every language. I'd still rather talk to dogs. I'd rather talk to a cat. <laughs> you I'm are like... just so like we joke a lot about how fucking tick you are, and you do nothing to help yourself. And I love you for it. It's probably the most endearing thing about you. Is it's my most just... redeeming feature. Yeah, you're, you're just a, you're straight man, up you're honest man, about you're a man it. Who like... knows exactly what he wants? I want to speak to a cat. <laughs> I'd love to speak to a cat. Yeah, but that really depends on what the cat has to say. I mean, if it turns, if it just turns up and goes fuck off Jack stop speaking to me you're boring yeah. you've ruined <laughs> then I think that, I've you? made a mistake yeah. <laughs> I've made a terrible error yeah. you know what a cat is going to say I'm going to bed now feed me or pet me Yeah. touch me stroke me for a little about 20 minutes and then I'll probably fall asleep and then I'll come and annoy you when I'm hungry Bye, so yeah. my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to listen to this is she because no, <laughs> apparently you eat her she shit gave, she gave up after three things that. She came up after you started talking about eating her shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you listen to this podcast, she's definitely given up after the shit eating. So she'll never oh, get to yeah. this bit. I'm pretty sure the last time I met her, she told me that like everyone in her family watches it, though. So. Uh, her younger brother does, yeah. Oh, that could. Uh, God, yeah, what, this, have this what have you done? Interesting. What have you done? Um. Or would you rather <laughs> have loved and lost or never loved at all? <laughs> <laughs> never loved at all, obviously. Jeez. I don't know. Fucking easy no. question. I'd rather have loved someone, I reckon. Loved and, loved and lost. Well, Jack has never loved at all because he's incapable of love. I don't know, I've loved some cats in my time. <laughs> <laughs> Physically or emotionally? Well, where, where are we going with this? I'm, I'm emotionally unavailable. Oh, okay. 
that's true. He is. He dead inside. And for yeah. the most part, he is also mentally unavailable. <laughs> the worst thing about this either dot io let's say you've linked this to is not ad blockers blocking 188 adverts on this page. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'd rather uh, have never loved at all because I have loved and lost, and it was fucking bullshit. So I'd rather no, yeah. not was, have to have experienced that. <laughs> it was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't know what, I'd, speaking of this website, I don't know what's happened, but my web browser's just refused to load any more pages. So there's that's me done for reading questions. We'll do a couple more and then end the show because this show <laughs> has been this absolute abomination. The midnight hour where podcasts come <laughs> to die. Yeah. I believe the addition of me and Lucemore has coincided with the death, but <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's just a massive such coincidence. such a good start last week as well. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's just a massive coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Right, here we go. If you could bring back the 90s, would you rather bring back 90s style, music, etc., or stick with the current trends? Current trends. Oh. See, right... I actually could probably write a thesis on this. Like, I fucking love everything about the 90s, all the cringy stuff. Yeah, same here. Um, Like, I loved, I loved Limp Bizkit's popularity. That was amazing for me. I loved Oasis, like, all that stuff. And I loved those ridiculous, um, really baggy jeans we spoke about earlier. I loved all of that stuff. But objectively speaking, current pop music is so good. Like we're at, I think we're at a stage where pop music is the best it's ever been since the Beatles were in the charts. Like, you know, like every pop song now has some kind of hip hop influence, and it's more produced, but it's also better as a result of that. The technology is better. Everything about it is just better. I think it's easy to say with hindsight, but the way people look now is just better than the '90s, and it feels sort of less cliquey and like less people belong to less groups and stuff. But I don't know if that's just a result of. Me but you say old. people look better now than did in the '90s. That's relevant to now. In 20 years' know, time, we could look absolutely mental looking back at us now. Yeah, that is true. I don't, but like I don't do any. Like I'm, I'm just a everything. My entire wardrobe comprises. T-shirts, hoodies, hoodies, beanies, and jeans, and jeans, and beanies. Yeah, I'm rough around shoes. Like I would, I would fit in in the '90s now if I went back. Yeah, that's true. So. I kind of dressed like what Pearl Jam dressed like in like 1991, essentially. I kind of dressed like you know the band Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I look like all of their members. <laughs> you look like a hybrid of all of them. I just think that my whole answer, reason for answering the 90s was I just think we should bring back Justin Timberlake when he looked like he had Super Noodle on his head yep. and Kelly Kapowski from oh, I'm Girl. so glad yeah, to have so. you back on the show and we can go back to mentioning Justin Timberlake in every episode because <laughs> the man is a fucking national treasure for Americans he really is but isn't he better he now is. clearly than he was back then oh by miles yeah he is he is one of the few celebrities who has made the ridiculously successful transition from child star to awesome God. yeah along with Ryan Gosling and they're actually both weren't they both affiliated. in the Mickey Mouse Club they they both had the, like the same they were they were close friends when they were children I they? think that's I'm a thing I'm pretty sure that like Timberlake's mum like fostered Gosling for a while or something very close to that I probably not yeah, illegal it, it, thing. I remember I remember I've read something similar to the uh that like Gosling uh wanted to Gosling's mum wanted him to go to California and uh, you know and Justin Timberlake and his mum lived there so then Justin Timberlake's mum took him in and are we now Best starting some Justin Timberlake Ryan Gosling fan fiction? Is that a thing that we're doing? Um, no, no, uh, that's next Justin week. Justin Timberlake, yeah, that's next week's episode. Because <laughs> um, I've just come across a rather dark. Would you rather? Oh dear, go for it. Uh, God. Would you rather have all the phobias known to mankind, or have to slowly skin your family and pets alive? Just a quick side note here so that I can uh, do a little bit of view whoring. If any of you guys want to know what all the phobias in the world are, check out episode 3 of the Midnight Hour. It's called Fears and Phobias, and we'll, we'll educate you on all of them. Talking of uh, phobias, if you want Ultimate Team Coins. Could you not plug Ultimate Team Coins at the same time? Nah, my sponsor doesn't sponsor me anymore, so thanks for that. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jack's life. <laughs> no, I've I've never plugged anything on this show except for Justin Timberlake yeah. <laughs> and pretty much every movie I've ever talked about. Yeah. Um, but getting back to the question, I that's really you know you're gonna have to pick the phrase and phobia or the phobias one, aren't you? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not sure I, any part of me could ever skin anyone that I know alive. Nah. I'm not sure I could skin anyone when they were dead. I can't skin a potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't actually, me, I can't either. Apple. Wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> Just start at the top and make your way down. Don't know. Can you use a spoon? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use one of your spoon fingers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Would you rather not be able to stop being serious or not be able to stop joking? Not be able to stop I joking. I haven't stopped joking since first. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's the joking one, yeah. yeah I'm having a really tough time with it. I don't know, I'd like, like to be I serious. Am, I think I'm probably one of the most sarcastic people in existence, but on Twitter, like, I have jokes and then I have serious things that I say, and I don't know which one I say more of. To be fair, whenever we have conversations, we're sort of half and half between funny and sort of serious. Actual. I think we make sarcastic jokes to say serious. Th- I think we say serious things true humor. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't feel like Twitter is a place where I can be serious in any capacity. Yeah, no, me neither. Uh, the internet is a horrible place. I don't place. think I can be serious or any in any way emotionally contributive to society. In 140 characters. The thing is, you can be, you can joke on Twitter, and people can give you abuse, but you can say it's a joke, so get over it. Whereas if you're serious about something, and people give you abuse, that's worse because they well, abused you for a, a view that you have, and you can't be like, oh, I, d- I was joking because you weren't, you were serious. Today I tweeted saying, in quotations, "Suicide is a coward's way out. I don't care who I offend." End quotations translates as I'm committed to being wrong please do not try to educate me yeah and, and I feel like that, that's a good mm. tweet yeah but like is is that that's kind of humorous slash serious right because it's, it's finding clearly humor a, in something serious isn't it yeah I think so yeah. and I think that I do that a lot like with everything that I say even when I make a serious point I make it sarcastically so that it's ob- like I don't know it's kind of weird like like I also tweeted um at National Geographical saying can you give me a rough idea of how many iPhones I would have to throw at an elephant before it would die of its injuries and that's mm. a really serious question that's plagued their society for a long time right. like one of those yeah, unanswered right. questions Yeah. and uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that I was looking through my tweets to try and find an example of what I'm talking about and yeah. I couldn't find one so yeah, I, but I think the best instead. the very best we're kind of getting back under Robin Williams but the best comedians mm. are those that find humour in serious topics because if you just tell like a fart joke it's funny but it's it doesn't have as much meaning as if you told a fart joke on the back of something more serious, you know. You've yeah, there's, and I, there's there's definitely a certain reason why uh, shock humor will always exist. Yeah, and why I think shock humor should exist. Like people say, you know, people can say, "Oh yeah, that joke's too soon after it died." I tweeted uh, just after Robin Williams died, saying, "Ah, oh, he must have rolled a three in Jumanji," like. That's kind of like you know, it's what is, you it's what you know him a as. Joke, but like, if some if if I was gonna die in, you know, if I was gonna die in any way, I don't want people to be. I don't want people to mourn my death. I want them to celebrate my life. I yeah. want them to make jokes. Like make jokes about my death. Like if I die in a hilarious circumstance, there's no point skipping around the fact that I've died in a hilarious circumstance. Yeah, there is. <laughs> that is one thing I like you know about I mean? modern like, football is that now we applaud players that like great players that have died rather than just stay silent for a minute like i never thought i never thought the silence was a thing why would we want to be silent after a, a, a famous footballer has died and now we yeah, applaud them true. which is much much better you know? one, of, one of the best tweets that i the, the first rob delaney is a comedian on twitter right but he's also a really kind of insightful person and a pretty good humanitarian i would think like he's said a lot of serious stuff that i agree with um and he after the I think it was after Sandy Hook or one of the shootings in a school um, this is the first time I ever found out about Rob Delaney but he tweeted at the NRA National Rifle Association in America and he just said you haven't tweeted in a few days what's up and that's hilarious because it's just really funny because it's blindingly obvious that it's like everything that they do about their organization is about preventing any form of firearm regulation and stuff like that Mm. And he just tweets something very obvious like that. And because he's got a massive following, they're obviously going to see the tweet and make no statement about it. And it's sort of, I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a joke about a really serious thing. And I think that's really good 
like I think that's a really good thing to do instead of just being serious all the time. So I guess my answer is not be able to stop joking because that's kind no, of how yeah. I am. No, like. no, yeah. I mean, um, this this probably seems quite dark. I mean, my nan died of a stroke what six nearly six months nearly a year ago now, and I've made a couple of jokes about her dying of a stroke to my friends, and their reaction is like, "You what?" And it's like I'm the one making the, the joke. Like you don't have to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm making the joke. Like I. What you should do not, is I don't, if I don't, any of them laugh, I don't just say to them, "What the fuck are you laughing at?" How fucking dare you? Like, yeah. Like I'm not making the joke because I think it's funny. I'm making the joke because, like you know, it's just something that I do. You know, it's just part of me. Like I haven't, I've never mourned my nan's death. I've celebrated her life. Yeah. And I don't see why. Like I'd make jokes about my nan making shortbread if she was still alive like, yeah but it's whatever makes you comfortable and if it makes you comfortable you know. making jokes about it then that's obviously better than you know not talking about it yeah. at all isn't it but I'd, people will you know, people I mean, are comforted talking... comforted by humor though aren't they a lot of people yeah. yeah and i don't think i think that's why humor should never have a limit i don't think i don't think uh, people say that oh no wait that that's too far a line yet like you can't make jokes about this you can't make jokes about that you should always be able to make. You should always be able to find humour, even in the worst circumstance. Like, I know that sounds really harsh, but you know that there is. You know, it's like there's a there's a line in a there's a comedian called Bo Burnham, and he does a lot of uh, musical like a stuff. Lot of music, yeah. yeah, musical stuff uh, like uh, you know songs and uh, comedy songs. Yeah, and um, one of his songs, um, the one of the lyrics is. Um, uh, because the Holocaust and 9/11 will uh, be joked about, um, and it's because tragedies are, and it, you know, it's about how tragedies are, you know, uh, comedy gold basically. Yeah, or it's the know, old it's adage play, it's of playing off, you know, tragedy plus time know. equals comedy. That's yeah, essentially exactly. what it is, isn't it? Yeah, but. exactly. And a lot of people for a lot of people, tragedy plus time equals comedy, but a lot of people just don't need the time factor. Also, comedy you know. plus time equals tragedy. I don't, that's not a thing. I just made that what up. kind of calculator are you guys using? I'm, <laughs> I'm using an abacus. Uh, pers- personally, I'm using Microsoft's calculator, and I'm really not sure where it's going with it. Can someone <laughs> tell me where tragedy is on the iPhone's calculator? <laughs> it's below the times thing. If you turn it, if you turn it sideways, and then you get all those buttons, it's like the third down. The oh, right. cross. Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. spell boobs instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Does that work on an iPhone? I'm not testing that right now. We did a really good job of sort of bringing this full circle from where we started about humor <laughs> and Robin Williams and yeah. depression, and then using humor as a coping mechanism for yeah. dealing with sadness and grief and things like that. And I don't know how we do this. Like you know, we're very bad at podcasting, but we seem to yeah. like run a show pretty well every time. And I don't know how that how, how that yeah. manages to just work, but it does. If you can't see the humor in anything, then what's the point? No, yeah. I'd rather see the humour in everything than just the total seriousness in everything. It's weird yeah. though, because I see the seriousness in everything, and everything is super serious to me all the time. And I think it's that's why fair. I make jokes about everything. Yeah, you know? but that's live that's your life how, as a you know. pessimistic optimist. There you go. Well, I'm just I like I'm yeah. I'm basically McConaughey in True Detective. Like that's kind of me most of the time, except I'm not anywhere near as badass or. You know, live your life as Justin Timberlake in uh, Friends, Friends with, with Benefits. benefits. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you get to fuck Mila Kunis, but your dad's got Alzheimer's. Uh, Alzheimer's <laughs> with an asterisk after it, which yeah, we all know what he really has. We all know what he really has. Yeah. He's been taken over by the sea people. And there it is. We couldn't there do we this go. Without Jack. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. He's back. He eats his girlfriend's shit. Nothing changes. <laughs> That was going to be his closing uh, line, and now you've stolen <laughs> it. <laughs> I thought I ended on a good note, and we're back to my girlfriend. <laughs> and me, that uh, shit. Yeah. Rest right, in peace, this has been, <laughs> Without a doubt, this has been the longest episode yet, which is pretty cool. And it's episode 20 and stuff. I don't know why I said that. Those are all things that will be perfectly clear to you the moment that His you press play. Episode 20 and stuff. <laughs> That's the title of the episode, to be fair. Midnight Hour, episode 20, stuff. Stuff. What, yeah. what can I actually yeah. call this? I don't really want to call it Would You Rather. Jack eats his girlfriend shit. No, I'm not going to call it that. Plus, why would you agree to that when there are two Jacks? Yeah, exactly. 
Jack Swag hates his girlfriend. Well, you could call it comedy. Would you? Would you have <coughs> comedy or serious? No, that's not a thing. I don't know. I was trying to work on something like comedy and serious or something. Robin Williams and stuff. Robin Williams. We'll and stuff. figure it all out. Let's just end just it do here. a sensationalist headline like. I don't know, I really can't think of one of them. A woman is dead. A woman is dead. A woman is dead. dead. Yeah. Yeah. Question mark, exclamation mark. Man dead, three other men question yeah. reasons behind seriousness in comedy. Yeah. <laughs> you could like a really, it could be a really long, long title. Can we end it? It's your podcast, man, you can do what you like. Let's end it all. Yeah. Let's end it all. Alright, fuck this. Dead. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Power in the verse can stop me. Oh, two minutes. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I nailed that bit. That bit. No, I you got down. <laughs> don't. No, you the don't. worst thing is you don't Come have on. it down. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, I don't see how I don't have that down. Oh. Right, I'm convinced. You have convinced me. Well done. <clears throat> What's going on? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> It'll be like 15 minutes into the show with a serious topic and you'll just go, what's, what's going, going on? on? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I think I'm just going to miss out the guys part because that's the bit I've got. What's going on, guys? <laughs> <sighs> you kind of, when you say our as well, you say it like, the, like you say it like an English person where you don't pronounce Yeah, that's the, the problem, isn't it? Ow. Yeah, because English people don't say R at the end of a word, but you say like, and welcome to episode 20 of the Midnight Hour. And it's... Hour. Yeah. Hour. So what should I say as as you're the Irish person? Can you say hour? Hour? No, is the answer to that question. Hour. No. Hour. Hour. Hour? Robert. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Robert. Robert. Hour. I've got a hour. question. How many subscribers do you need to have before you stop introducing yourself for every video? <laughs> <laughs> That's good There is no set amount. <laughs> Just one day. I used think, to. Okay, right. Everybody here knows who I am by now. Yeah, that's a good point. Do I need to go? What's going on, guys? My name is Elden. I could just go. What's going on, guys? And welcome to episode twenty of the Minute Hour. It just doesn't flow. Can... It just doesn't flow without that. This... My name. Yeah. Is yeah. Elden Hour. The thing is, though, I used to never actually introduce myself. So, like, until I had about four thousand subscribers, <laughs> I didn't even fucking say who I was. Like, didn't you? To be fair, at the end of most videos, to start with, you said "fuck this video," didn't you? I still say you that still every now and then. Oh dear. One guy once tweeted me like, hey man, I'm a huge fan. I love that one video where you said fuck this at the end of it. Um, will we do another would you rather? I need to nip for a piss before we do, so. Yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a break. So, yeah. Do we have piss breaks in the podcast? Yeah. Oh, me and El, me and El always really? do. Really? I've yeah. just been pissing myself. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bottle right next to me right now. I used to just... when I, when we used to do this regularly. I used to have like a bag and tube system, but I lost it when I moved <laughs> away from uni. So you know. he lost it in the Great War. <laughs> yeah, yeah, against the sea people. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're not sitting on the microphone when you're pissing.
YouTube celebrity, obviously, that's the thing. Yeah. Superstar. <laughs> All around good guy. This is mm. what they'll call no, no, no. the Katy Perry fan club. Kate, leader of the Katy Perry fan leader, club. Leader, fuck off. Co leader. Co founder. Co founder. Nah, I, yeah. I suggested Co it. Mm. I suggested mm. it. Do you have any evidence to support that claim? <laughs> You've been a dickhead. Ooh. It's not about Ooh. what you know, it's what Ooh. you can prove in court. Prove. Picks or it didn't mm -hmm. happen. Fuck off. Alright. <laughs> we'll pick up again with uh, this. What right. that noise? Nah, that was just me getting the audio peak, so I'll know what bit to cut out. <coughs> so I keep making noises though, so it's audio peaking. No, stop. Just <laughs> <shut up. laughs>